only thing I've seen is J.D. McDonough taking the most ridiculous turnbuckle bump of all time. I will say about J.D. McDonough's bump that everybody put on the internet. Well, that's what the internet's for, is you have to find one silly thing and put it on, and then everyone talks about how WWE is the worst thing ever, or J.D. McDonough sucks, or whatever. It was one goofy bump. It was uh, quite similar to a bump that Shawn Michaels used to do all the time. It was, actually. I don't hear people saying that Shawn sucked. And what made this worthwhile was the fact that John Cena put this guy over so clean, but it was an excellent job getting Solo Sokoa over. Well, I certainly hope after 11 spikes to the throat, he will be able to talk again because God knows he won't be able to call spots. My goodness, laying on his back, the camera's right in there on his face, and he's just screaming at the top of his lungs on what to do next. Usually in a match with a guy who's new, it's the veteran saving the new guy when shit goes awry. But uh, there was at least one time during this match where Logan totally saved this guy's life when things were going awry. This guy gave uh, Logan Paul brass You mean, and I quote... This fool from Logan Paul's entourage? He was never named. No. I have no idea who this guy was. No, mm. no. Then when Roman is just standing there, and standing there, and brooding, and Michael Cole tells me, just take it in, because he's such a great champion. I was like, fuck you and fuck this. Wow. <laughs> I got really upset about that. Jiminy Christmas. You know the best thing about Roman Reigns' title reign? It makes me feel young again, because I feel like I've been watching it since my 20s. Wow. <laughs> wow, Vinny. Can people stop going on vacation? I, I realize that's me saying that and all, but like, yeah. it's like people go on vacation every other week here. Even I don't do that. It's like people vanish all the time. Where the fuck is Hangman? Brother, this guy broke into his house. Shouldn't he be Cut a pro on and... his child. Go to the building, Hangman. Make hey, a listen, deal out of he it. was in the building. Well, you know, he should have been. He should have been at Swerve's house then. Whose house? Swerve's house. S Swerve's but he wasn't there. No. I don't no. know where he was. Applebee's? No. no offense to, like, half the people on this collision show, but they need to be off television. Gates of Agony or uh, Kip Sabian and his buddies or those two blokes that Taven and Bennett beat. Even Taven and Bennett, like, what the fuck are they doing on this show? I like them, but what does this have to do with anything? Meanwhile, Hangman's at fucking Applebee's or wherever. The Righteous have got the snapping gimmick over. The snapping was over in Seattle, yeah. So uh, I think uh, I think this might be what they need to uh, get to the next level. <laughs> snapping? Maybe. Ryan, you sound skeptical. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know. <laughs> that's, that's exactly it. Nigel had the best commentary line of the year 2023. Brian Danielson. So concerned with the welfare of people who've been injured like him, he has set up a website for people re recovering from orbital bone surgery. It's a site for sore eyes. I laughed, and I laughed. I'm writing this down. And it is the Granny 94th birthday celebration here today. Yes, she has turned 94. Happy birthday. <laughs> Are you there and alive, Granny? <laughs> what do you have to say about your birthday, what do you Granny? What you say about everyone wishing you a happy birthday? Thanks. Excellent. Okay. Thanks, everybody. All right. Happy to hear that. The best the show has ever had is the superstar. Excuse me. Excuse me. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> the what? The best this show has ever had is the superstar that we call Gladys. Oh my. <laughs> we had to have one, didn't we? Her jokes are funny and giggles cute. She dances in her birthday suit. Uh, what? what? 94 years of dominance, this person says. That's awesome. <laughs> Feliz cumpleaños, Granny. Ooh. Too many more. A lot of people, Granny, calling you a national treasure. After all that, I don't think I'm ready to go yet. Well, well that's Excellent. good to hear. Excellent. Happy, yes. Well, maybe we should do this regularly then. Undertaker. He buries him alive versus Jerry Lawler, the king, a casket match. Lawler in skin-tight pants, little weird for his weight problem. Wow. First move was Undertaker has an open hand on Lawler's face. I actually feel better because we just had Granny on the show. She brought mm -hmm. life and joy to this program. But God damn it, I hate this fucking show. Yep. I fucking hate TNA. Yeah. And uh, and we need to have a, a meeting right now. 
Fuck. about this fucking show. What can we do? I don't want to watch it anymore. <laughs> I hate it. It's quite bad. I hate it. It's terrible. I think we should keep it something retro. And uh, so anyway, here's the thing. Email me, brian at wrestlingobserver.com. Or text me, 425-780-7566. Or just go up on Twitter and uh, and tweet me. And everybody let me know what you think, and then we'll all make a decision. But I'm pretty sure this is the last NWA. It sucks. We had MJF addressing Jay White, Samoa Joe, yes. Daniel Garcia, correct, Roderick Strong. Yes. And the guns. <laughs> and the guns. Yes. MJF has gone from the guy that you never saw him wrestle to he's constantly wrestling and all over every single show. It is it is an amazing 180 that they have done with MJF. And I guess, you know, as we give it time, we'll find out if it's a, a positive, a negative, or a wash. <laughs> Darby Allen and Sting versus the Outrunners. How they hear was Tony Schiavone name-dropping our own Jim Valley. Yes. As a yes. historian. Noting this he is a historian, yes. Second match ever in Portland and the first since the 1980s. Swerve versus Penta. This ruled. Hangman is banned from ringside. <laughs> yeah. Finally, Hangman patiently waited until the match was over. Do as he's told. He did not want to get in trouble. No. And he ran down and he beat this guy's ass. Uh, Brandon says he's an obedient millenni millennial cowboy. Well, that's not going to be a top star. I'm sorry. But uh, they're talking about friends, which brings the Bucks in to whine about who is the better friend, which is like two-thirds of the stories in this show. Meet forever, they're chanting. <laughs> I know that they don't like to beat people if they're big stars and if they're going to be going for a title. Keith Lee could have really used a win over Samoa Joe for the Ring of Honor TV title, but they didn't want to beat Samoa Joe, so he just vacated the title. And on top of that, he vacated a Ring of Honor title... Because he wants the AEW title. Yes. Which is held by a guy who also holds a Ring of Honor title. My sincere hope is that they were just retiring the goddamn thing. There's too many belts in this company. I wouldn't hold your breath, brother. I, I think they've already announced that Tony will make an announcement on Ring of Honor at some point. But yeah, that was that was strange. I saw on the board today people were all on me about how great this match was or whatever. And it wasn't. I'm the one that has been pushing for a Julia Hart push for months now. So I don't want to hear that I'm some asshole. But it wasn't a very good match. I'm sure they'll have a better one next time. But what I don't like is being yelled at and told that a match was way better than it actually was. I'm not fucking blind. And RJ City says, We have signed Mariah May. I <laughs> said, What? I am so excited to be here. Tony Storm is the reason I am here. RJ says, well, you're going to get to meet her next week. And Mariah May is so happy she kisses RJ. And that is the debut yeah. of Mariah May. That was not the best debut I ever saw. Jay White versus Mark Briscoe in the main event. Just a simple, basic, awesome wrestling match. And I would like to make this abundantly clear that I have absolutely no idea who the devil is. But whoever is portraying the devil, I can't help but notice, is pretty skinny. Mm. And uh, I also couldn't help but notice that the devil's henchman threw the acclaimed through glass. Real glass, perhaps. Cry me a fucking river, brother. Could be, could be. Now, I'm Dar is fucking great. Akira Tozawa is fucking great, and the wrestling that they did with each other, you'll be stunned to hear, was fucking great. You have a buddy that's got maybe like a, a pit bull, and it's a very nice, well-behaved pit bull, but then like some weirdo walked across the street, and the dog goes, ah, 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 and goes crazy, and all of a sudden you go, holy fuck, that thing would kill me. That's what I thought when I watched Otis hit these. I was fucking, I legitimately was scared for a second. <laughs> I was actually scared. I felt like I'd seen a bear outside my house when I saw him hit those ropes. And Tiffany starts to go for the PME. Fallon apparently thought she was in the wrong spot. So she scoots further down the mat. And so Tiffany is thinking she's going to land on Fallon's body. She lands right on Fallon's head. And you can see Fallon just go, Duh! like her, her eyes are just glazed. Like she got fucking smashed in the head. 
and Tiffany Pinder. And uh, that was the end of that. Braun Breaker versus Von Wagner, or as Vic called it, the dominant Braun and the powerful Von meet one-on-one. Wow. And then Mr. Stone is so happy to be saved, he wants a big handshake from his friend. But his friend hugs him. To these fans, this friendship was more important than a win. See the women's audience for this show? I did not. Golly, sky fucking high. Hmm. This was this was the second highest 18 to 49 since 2019. This show. So all I... because of this friendship. Brandon says maybe Andre Chase has killed somebody and Tony knows about it. Could That'd be. be a twist. He does have an anger management issue. He does. He he yeah. may have cursed at somebody so badly they died. Lexus King last week did say, "Wait till you see what I'll do." Or what I've already done. That's true. So, That's true. did Lexus attack him? I mean, Mello's reaction was, was uh, he, he seemed quite guilty. I like storylines like this. I don't know where it's going to go, but they've done a great job stretching it out. And uh, there's a lot of different options about who it could be.